to the be back again tonight to pray for the sick and the needy, those who have need of, of healing. This afternoon we had a glorious time talking about the Word and about how God will care for us. And I love to read His Word and, and speak about Him. And now we've gathered tonight to pray for the needy, the sick and the afflicted, those who are in need of prayer. And I trust that God will heal many tonight. Now, He's here, and the only thing we have to do is to believe Him, is to accept Him. And now as I pray for the sick, I told the brethren that I'd start the prayer line right away. And I want to read some scripture first before we have prayer. In the third chapter of, of Exodus, Exodus is the calling out of the, of the church. Israel was the people of God until they came out of Egypt and then they were the church of God. The word church means called out, the Exodus, bringing out. And this is God dealing with his servant bringing, to bring the children out of Egypt. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mount of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. Oh, sorry. Our Heavenly Father, we believe tonight that you're still the same great Jehovah God that has seen the need of the people in the days of Moses and how that in the day to fulfill your promise to the people that you made to Abraham, their father, had Moses to come on the scene, a little boy born in a home that was a very odd birth, something peculiar taking place, they seen he was a proper child, and he was hid in the bulrushes, you guided him, nourished him, brought him up to the age of a time that's about 40 years old, and then he the people misunderstood that he was to be their leader. They did not recognize the leader. And today it's likewise, Father. We can't seem to realize that it's the Holy Spirit that our leader. Come to us to lead us. We're dreaming a flame of fire, an angel that went before him. That was the one that was up on the rod that smote the land, that opened the Red Sea, that hung over them like a pillar of fire, that guided them. And where the fire went, they went. The cloud by day and the fire by night. Father, today we believe that you're with us. We know thou art. You have your, revealed yourself in a way, in a mysterious way telling us that you was with us, showing signs and wonders, and then have come down and permitted to the unbeliever a sign that cannot be lightly spoke of among their own people of scientists has proven it truly the same Jehovah. And we love you, Father, tonight, and we know that you're with us, and we pray that your spirit will reveal tonight the great things of God that all the audience might with one accord. Now we know that it's not impossible to have a repeat of Pentecost tonight. We're all here in one place. May we become in one accord under one expectation. That is that God will move into our midst and heal all the sick and the needy. Grant it, Lord. Bless us now in the farther part of these services. In the name of thy beloved child, Jesus, we ask it. Amen. All right. Now, we wish to speak to you just for a few moments, just a very few moments, about God revealing himself to his people. 
Now, God cannot make anyone believe. God can only reveal himself in different forms. He has revealed himself in wind and in and, uh, mysterious uh, mistress movements and so forth. And in the form of angels has he revealed himself. And he's revealed himself in man by preaching the gospel. He's revealed himself in, in times of trouble to people like, and sometimes he has to take a loved one sometimes to bring the heart of the person to the acknowledgement of God. You believe that? He does. He reveals himself in the sunset, in the sunrise. He reveals himself in meetings for great blessings to stretch out his hands before the people and bless them. You believe that? And now, he is trying to reveal himself today to the sick and the needy in a form of an angelic being coming down like he did on the pool of Bethesda, but up on mankind to reveal himself by showing signs and wonders. Also, by now, as they told you a few moments ago, Brother Baxter was speaking concerning the picture that was taken. To some people, that might just be a picture. But to me, that's a sacred spot. As soon as the picture was taken in that debate that night, when I was studying three or four times, they had many, many, many times, this little group here wouldn't fill a corner of that big stadium there. The place was walled in with people. And I was sitting way up high. I said, I will not say a thing tonight. I'll listen to Dr. Bosworth and them holding this scripture discussion. And the Baptist minister had hired, as they told you, you've heard it read, hired some photographers that come over take a half a dozen pictures of me while I skin the old man. But don't ever argue with people. You just stand still and let God do it. I wouldn't argue, wouldn't debate with no one. I don't believe in it in the first place. I can only state what's truth. If you want to believe it, all right. If you do not, there'll be others who will believe it. Isn't that right? And don't ever argue, don't debate. God's word is not to be fussed over like that. Every person that has the right idea, and those who believe, all right. Those who do not believe, well, it's the same. So I refuse to have anything to say into it, because when you get to arguing with people, you get all steamed up in the presence of the Lord then. So I know God's not in it, so I just, those who want to debate, that's their business. But sitting up there, listening to the discussion going on, and all of a sudden, I felt when he said, the man said, let this miracle worker come forth and perform. Miracle worker. And he said, let him come forth. I like to see him. And Brother Bosworth said, Brother Bram is in the building. He said, I won't say where, but if he wants to come down here and speak to the people before they're dismissed, all right. And just then, something has picked me up like that. And when it picked me up, I knew I was to go forward. And I come down out of the balcony walk to the platform, just as I walked to the platform, I said, it's too bad that people have to argue over the Word of God. I said, don't no one feel sorry or uh, feel bad at Mr. Best because that's all right. But I said, that's not the Baptist belief because I was rocked in a Baptist cradle myself. And I know the Baptists believe in divine healing. I praying for the sick. And I said, that's not a Baptist belief. That's Mr. Best's belief alone. And I see they're sending letters all the way across the country, but that won't stop God's work. It'll just keep moving on. I try. People, religious, Holy Ghost filled people don't pay no attention to stuff like that. So then, they uh, all the devil moves. That just makes a, a stepping stone for Christ always. So I said, well, uh, the only thing that I can do, I said, I spoke to I guess three or four million people, direct or indirect. I have never at any time ever claimed to be a divine healer. I said, never. I can heal no one. But I said, the things that I say, if they are of God, then God will speak back to vindicate his word. See? And if it isn't of God, then God will not have nothing to do with it, for God will not put his hands on things that's wrong. You know that. I said, my word is just a man. But when God speaks, then that's God. See? And I said, if I testify something, and God comes around and says that's true, 
then that's God's word. You believe him. And I said, if I'm truthful, God will testify. And about that time, here it comes. Coming down from heaven like a whirl, and it's been shrouding me in. And a man run up and shot the picture. Many people seen it. Even uh, some people that belong to different churches, like Roman Catholic and so forth, was converted and believed with all their heart. And it shot the picture. And when the man that taken the picture, very critical, said I was a hypnotizer. Made an awful write up in the paper, just scandaled it every way, and said, Why, he's a hypnotizer. He gets those people hypnotized, and they just go away like that. And when he began to develop those pictures, he pulled out the six of Mr. Best, and every one of them was blank, perfectly blank. And when he'd taken this one out, and that halo appeared on there, he almost went into a heart attack. He didn't know what had happened. He tried to get me out of the Rice Hotel, of course, he realized I had to, they couldn't do that. And the next morning, he'd become a believer. He was, a, he was an Orthodox Jew, but become a firm believer in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And they got the picture. They asked me what to do about it. First, before the, I said, now, or as soon as I looked at it, I said, that's it. Before I seen it, my mother was the first one to see it come in the room when I was a baby. About a half hour after I was born, maybe not so long. The next time I seen it, it was a whirlwind in a bush going. And it spoke to me. I was seven years old, said, never smoke, chew, drink, or defile your body in any way. That'll be a work for you to do when you get older. And immediately after that, I was packing water, coming home from a little old barn back behind the place crying. I wanted to go fishing. And all the boys that went fishing, I had hair was hanging down in my face. I was packing water in two little surf buckets. And as I went along down the lane, as this is quite September late, and I stopped under a big old uh, silver poplar tree. The leaves began to turn brown. We had a slight frost. And I was sitting there crying. I thought, oh my, isn't it horrible? All those boys out there fishing here, I have to stay home pack water. And I was sitting there and I was crying, the dirty streaks down my face where the tears was rolling. And I was sitting under the tree just as still as this in this tent point. All at once I heard something going. I said, where is it? I looked up, the old leaves blowing. I said, well, where's that wind coming from? And I cried a few more tears and picked up my buckets and started away. And it kept getting louder and louder. Well, I stopped. And just about as high up as what those lights are in the tree, there was a place like a whirlwind, we call them in Indiana. I guess you call them a little cyclone like, you know, whirling. It was right in the bush going, and I looked at it, not another leaf moving, but right there. And from there came an audible voice, just like you hear mine, that don't never smoke, chew, drink, or defile your body in any way. That'll be a work for you to do when you get older. Here's Mother sitting here tonight. I uh, ran as hard as I could. She thought a snake had bit me or something, but I wouldn't tell her. And my little brother and I, a few days later from that, were sitting out under the tree. We'd been playing marble. And I felt a peculiar feeling, like a, something was standing near me. And all at once, something happened. I sat down. And I looked, and I seen coming up out of the river, a big bridge. It expanded across the river, and 16 people fell off of it. I went and told them. They said, well, you dreamed. I said, no, I looked at it. I seen it. Twenty-two years from that time, the big units were free to stand across the Ohio River, and 16 men lost their life on it. And it just started like that. Then began, and that was before I was ever even a Christian. My people wasn't Christian. Gifts and callings are without repentance. It's the foreordained nation of God. Then he kept telling things. On down, I remember the next time when my father offered me a drink of whiskey and told me I was a sissy because he didn't take it. I took the bottle and started to take it. And while I was standing there and started drinking, I heard something going, if it would have been me, I would have drank it. But it was God protecting his gift that had been gone. None of my righteousness is. Then, you know how old boys are? They get a little sweetheart when they get about 16, 17 years old. I like all little boys. I, I had a little girlfriend. I thought she was the prettiest thing I ever seen. Teeth like pearl, you know, and eyes like a dove. And we went riding, she and I, and some more, oh, another boy and his girlfriend. And we stopped at a little place to get some sandwiches and some coke. And when I stopped, I went in and got the sandwiches and coke and came back out. I was, I drank my coke, ate the sandwich, and I'd taken the bottles back. 
To my surprise, coming out, my little sweetheart was smoking a cigarette. Well, I've always had my opinion of a woman who smoked a cigarette, and I haven't changed it yet. It's the lowest and morest thing that any woman ever done. That's right. It's exactly right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that you believe that. Now, ladies, don't be angry with me. Just correct yourself. That's right. Listen, you talk about a fifth columnist. A cigarette smoking mother is the greatest fifth columnist America's got. Doctors claim that they can't even raise their babies like normal. The nicotine poison will kill the baby before it's 18 months old. 80% of them die. That's government statistics. Now, listen. Don't be afraid of some other nation coming in and whipping us. It is no other nation. We're whipping ourselves. It ain't the robin that pecks the apple that hurts it. It's the worm at the core that kills the apple. That's, that's all, our own rottenness among us is what it is. It's what like kills the uh, uh, small de degrade and decline of the apple. Notice, then I've seen that woman, that girl smoking her cigarette. That got me. And to beat it all, she said, have a smoke, Billy. I said, no, ma'am, I don't smoke. She said, now you said you didn't go to dances, and you didn't, now you don't smoke, you said you didn't drink, what do you do? I said, I like to go fishing, honey, Well, that didn't interest her. She said, she said, why well, you big sissy? Oh, my, a woman called me sissy. Uh, I said, hand me the cigarette. And she gave me one, she said, that's like a man. I wanted to be a man, so I took a cigarette and stuck the match like that, and I started up to my mouth. There's one go. I see. I was determined. I believe if I'd got that cigarette in my mouth, I'd have fainted. I got a car, and they turned the lights on me, and I went up the road, and they were crying, and then behind me teasing me, and I went up in the field and laid down there in a bunch of hay and stuff, and cried and cried, and asked to die and everything else. I didn't want to be a big sissy, but it was God protecting his gift. See? That's right. Then on down through life, the things, friend, would take hours to go into it. I'll try to get to it next Sunday, the Lord willing. But it appeared down there on the Ohio River before nearly 10,000 people while I was baptized. In August, I was baptizing some 500, I guess, that afternoon. Hundreds of them were standing in the choir singing on Jordan, Stormy Banks. I stand. about 2 o'clock. We hadn't had rain for about two weeks. I had my 17th candidate I was taken out in the water. I raised up, I asked him if he believed, if he would have been repented at the meeting, yes. I raised up my hand, I said, Father, as I baptize this boy with water, may you baptize him with the Holy Spirit. And as I started, something went, I looked up, I heard a voice. I said, look up, thousands standing all over the bank on the Ohio River facing Louisville. Paper carried a big article of it. I looked coming right down out of the heavens, out of a place by big this platform, the blue skies churning like waters. Coming right down out of there came a big thing like a star whirling around one. Coming right down, visible before the eye. Moved right down, looked like a star in a distance. When it got close, it looked like a milling fire of light. Moving right down and sun over where I was. Then went right back up into the heavens again. The waters let up. I've often wondered if that wasn't the angel that was on the water. And Bethesda. Went away in. Papers carried big articles. Mystery, mysterious star appears over minister while baptizing. And on down it kept coming. One night in Camden, Arkansas, I was trying to explain a people sitting very skeptic. I'd just been called into this ministry. I was telling him, I said, now, dear friends, I'm just a man. I'm trying to explain something that God sent his angel that's been with me all along. A few weeks before that, when it come to make itself known, uh, uh, I'll explain that first. And while I was standing there, explaining it to the people, it was right down to an auditorium like this. I look coming in the front door, and here it comes, moving around, around. People getting screaming, fainting. There's a Baptist preacher sitting there, sitting in a chair, been bound for years, like this. There's a deacon in the Baptist church. Why, moments time, he was out of there pushing the chair down the street, screaming top of his voice. And it moved right up where it was and come right over where I was and whirled around and around and around. There was a newspaper man down there, shot the picture, a photographer rather, shot the picture of it. There it come out in the picture that time. And he was converted. Next day, gave his heart to Christ, come into my room crying and was converted. The hotel where I was staying, the keeper there, the Washtenaw Hotel, 
come in and said, Brother Branham, I've belonged to Baptist Church for years, but I want that Holy Spirit that you're talking about. See? And there, then it appeared many times. And in different forms, I've seen it many times. I've seen it come into my room and speak to me. And the last time it appeared to me, just before I was called on this, I was in my room. I was praying. It gets me up sometime at night. I'm up all night at a time, many times, praying. I feel it near me. It'll come real near, and it'll go away. I can feel it now. It's near. Then when I go to praying for the sick, it'll come down like this, go like a then leave. Then when it's, when it's down, that's what I see. That's what detects. And if I use my own voice, my own opinion, it, it won't say. But when I just let myself alone, it does the talk in itself. That's what tells the diseases. And and when it come down, and that night I was sitting there and I was reading, and I'd pray, and I'd read, and I'd pray, and it'd get along towards around 3 o'clock in the morning. It's usually a wonderful time it comes. It's come to me, oh, dozens and dozens of times in life. And I was sitting there reading. And when he comes, it'll show me things. My brother and yours witness of that. There may be weeks before it comes. It'll show me like you're going down the street. Say this way. I'll just give you a little drama. Going down the street this way. And I see a white fence. A gate. I open the gate. There is an old hole laying in the yard. I go up. I see a doctor leave. He's packing a satchel. I knock at the door. A lady comes to the door crying. Her baby's dying. All right. I go in. I take my hat. Lay it down here on the radio, and I see the house, and then I feel a real strange feeling. I'll go, and I, before I do that, I'll see somebody pick up my hat and lay it on the corner of the bed. Or I'll go and, and, and pray for the baby. I'll see the heal. Come on out. Or maybe it'll be, I'll tell the people that's what's going to happen. And I, I say, now, this, it's just like a while ago in my room. I've seen a vision. I can tell you something's going to happen tonight, right here now. It just come into my room a while ago while I was alone. And so you tell, just like that. And then when I, I'll be going down, maybe I'll have a sick call or going somewhere, be walking. I'll say, oh, here's that gate. This is it right here. I'll walk up right to that place. Somebody with me, I'll watch and see what happens. Go into the room. I'll lay my hat down there. Now, everything's in the room, but the, there is no woman there with a red sweater on. I can't say a word. That woman has to be staying there with a red sweater. Well, maybe when she comes in, the other lady goes out. It isn't time yet. I just keep on talking. And I wait, and here they all are in the room, but my hat hasn't been moved from the radio to the bed. Everything has to be perfectly the way he showed me. Then when the way he shows me that, everything comes in perfect, I stand with the baby and say, Thus saith the Lord. It can't say. I've never seen it. It's perfect. That's the first way it works. The second way is you're on the platform. And and so uh, they, that, that's the way, uh, that, that takes place, the way it, the way it works and happens. Now... The night when it had taken place, when he called me to this ministry, I was sitting in the room, been in prayer, my, I've been praying all night, burden looked like. And I got up, walk around the room, and I'd pray again. And I was a pretty successful Baptist preacher. I'd have audiences, sometimes 3,000, and had revivals, thousands were saved, baptized. And I was sitting there, and I seen a light flicker in the room, and I looked to see where it was at. I thought, well, here, where I was going to pray and went up there in them hills, I noticed that nobody was coming in there with a car, and I thought, well, where was that? And I looked, and here it was right up here above. It was that same thing that you see in the picture. It was spread out on the floor, getting larger and larger, spreading out across the floor. Well, I thought, oh, God, just imagine now how you would feel. Now, friends, these things are just not something that you just imagine in your mind. I speak just as direct, and he speaks to me just as I'm talking to you now. It's not just imagination. And I heard something going, walking. I heard something walking, and I looked, and when I, I seen the feet of a man, barefooted, coming, walking in through that light, coming to my right, always comes from my right. That's the reason I have the prayer lines coming this way. It always comes from my right. And, um, and I looked, and I seen his feet. He, when he got to me, he was a tall man. He was heavy set, weighed about 200 pounds, looked like. Just as natural as I'm standing here, he had his arms folded like this. First time I'd ever seen him in that form. He walked right up to where I was. He looked down, he had a smooth face, dark hair. His hair was down, uh, round kind of like his shoulders. 
He didn't have beard on his face. He had a smooth face. And he walked and he looked up to me. Was kind of, he looked pathetic to look at him. He looked like he was a man of... Well, I just could not uh, picture his characteristics of his, of his character, of his face. He looked like a man that was sympathetic and kind-hearted, but yet he looked like a man if he'd speak. It would be that way. So I looked at him, and he looked at me. I was so scared. I, I was like my thumbnail to it. was almost bleeding. Listen, friend, you'd be too. Don't think you wouldn't. I was like, look, like that. He said, fear not. I knew that was the same voice that spoke to me all along. That's the first time I'd ever see it like that, but I know that voice. He said, fear not. I am sent from the presence of the Almighty God to tell you that your peculiar birth and peculiar life has been always misunderstood with you. That your peculiar life and peculiar birth has been to indicate that you take a gift of divine healing to the peoples of the world. And I said, Sir, I am uneducated. I could not go. He said, I'll be with you. And I said, Sir, I, I'm, I, I'm uneducated. I said, I, I could not go. The people wouldn't believe me. He said, As the prophet Moses was given two signs, so will you be given two. That first will be that you'll be able to detect diseases by your hand, taking the patient by the right hand to, uh, and your left. And if you'll be sincere when you pray, get them to believe you and be sincere when you pray, nothing shall stand before your prayer, not even cancer. He, he spoke cancer. That's the only disease he said. And he said, then if you'll be sincere with that, it will come to pass that you will tell them the secrets of their heart. So that will be the two signs. And he said, I'll, and I said, I will go. He said, I'll be with you. And just then the light began to gather up. And he gathered up to the angel. And he got into the angel. The angel went up into that little pillar of fire that you've seen tonight. And it went out of the room. I didn't know what to do. The first patient comes to me and I touched him with a cancer. I didn't know what was the matter with him. I just let myself alone and then began to pray. And that way went the cancer. And the woman weighs 155 pounds now in perfect health. She was uh, one of the 21-year graduate nurse with cancer just through and through her. Now, that's the way it goes. When I seen the picture, I knew that it was the same thing that I'd seen since the child. I knew it was the same one. Now, what I think it is, I would not wish to take any remuneration off of it because it's too sacred for that. And I put up, uh, made him put up price so that all four people could get it. If it was mine... Whatever it costs to print, that's what it would be, but it isn't mine. It belongs to them. But, dear friends, what I think it is, God, to the skeptic and unbeliever that wouldn't believe the signs that you believe, he has to believe also. And God has given a sign to the world today. He always sends signs. Don't you believe it? This will be a sign of you. You'll find the child wrapped and swallowing. Is that right? The wise man followed a star. They brought them always God gives signs and wonders. And I think it's a sign to let us know that we're in the last day, and even the unbeliever is without excuse now. And when they told me and brought me to before the picture and so forth, he said, you will die like all mortals, Reverend Branham, but your picture will live as long as the Christian civilization. I found that the picture doesn't look like me. Everybody says, that's not you. Well, you can imagine that that's that close to you, it kind of change your features, too. It does. I like to fish, hunt like anyone else. I work. But when it comes time for these things, then God takes over. Now, believe, friends, that it's nothing that I can do in myself. It's God that does it. May the Lord Jesus bless you. I want to pray. Your Heavenly Father, bless the night. Maybe we are meetings a little late, but we are going to believe you for everything tonight. Grandfather, you know what I'm looking for now, and I believe that you will grant it to your servant, Father. You've never showed nothing but what it should come to pass. God bless, give great strength and power, and may the angel that I've been speaking about, Father, move down upon your humble servant at this hour. 
that signs and wonders might be wrought by the hands of thy holy Son, Jesus, by stretching forth his hands to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, to make the cripples to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, and all manner of diseases cured, that people might know before this great world is shook out of its orbit by these great powers of the world, hydrogen and oxygen bombs, hydrogen bombs and atomic power that we believe that soon is to rock the earth from its orbit. God have mercy upon us. Oh, Father, may men and women here in this building tonight, boys and girls, realize the seriousness of this. And may unbelievers be saved, or we ask to be saved, or we ask to be saved. There's a little boy somewhere. There's a little boy in the world. I have been able to spot him somewhere. I have been able to spot him somewhere. And he's a little lad. He is about 10 years old, 8 or 10. He's wearing a yellow shirt. I watched the little baby with the water head there, but it isn't that baby. The baby, the boy has done something the wrong. He's crippled in his knees. He's got bad eyes. Crippled in his knees. He's got bad eyes. He's got bad eyes. He's going to be here in the building somewhere tonight, I believe, or maybe tomorrow night. He's going to the building. But it's a little boy in the building. He'll be wearing a yellow shirt. He'll be wearing a yellow shirt. Is that your affliction? Is that what's wrong with you? Jesus Christ makes you whole, my boy. You have no more to worry about. God bless you. I didn't know you, honey, staying down among those women. Do you believe that, mother, with all your heart? Why, yes. You're suffering yourself, aren't you? You have a tumor, isn't it, lady? Isn't that right? Then hold up your hand. Isn't it? And you lady sit next to him there. You are extremely nervous, aren't you, sister? All right. You, you go on, please, Jesus. Is that right? You're healed. God bless you. All right. Let us, now, everybody, be just as reverent. Now, Father, you know all things. This lays within your strength and your power alone. Bless these people, dear God, and heal them for Jesus' sake. Amen. Everybody be real reverent. Don't have no fear or doubt. Just believe. I just caught something in this vicinity. I can't tell. If somebody sitting right along there is bothered with... It's, it's, I believe, yeah, I believe it's you, sister. You have a, a nervous condition. Is it kind of like a, a demon oppression? Isn't that right? Is that all right? It's left you now. You just got healed of that just a few minutes ago. It's all over. You have pains and things that bother you, hurt you. Isn't that true? Pains in your body. Satan attempting you, attacking you. All right, be of a good courage. Jesus knows all about that and made it well for you. God bless you. What are you looking like that for, sir? That back trouble you had left you also right there. Yes, sir. It's, it's over now. God bless you. Hi, everybody. Be real reverent, if you will. Where is your prayer line being called? The noise. Those with uh, prayer, you get it, brother. Well, I pray. Those tonight with prayer cards from L25 to L40. From L25 to L40. If you'll stand in line according to your number at my right, your left. We appreciate the way God's people are standing by in prayer these nights. We want you to continue to do so. We feel that God may do a new thing in the Cleveland meeting. We're expecting the Lord to do a new thing right along. We believe that it might just happen right here. If we can only realize that this is God moving, God's people get behind it in prayer, I think we're going to see something unusual in this meeting. Many are sitting on the outside and it, uh, having a tendency to get up and to break their view. If there's anybody behind you where you're standing, why you please sit down. That's very necessary. That's right. There's folks sitting behind you. Why you sit down. Do not fire anyone who is behind you and been sitting. I sure see that that's kept very down. I will change your position. Shall we stand and sing 
only believe. feel all right now? Can you see all right? Your leg all right? Now you're going to be well. I mean, you come from a distance, and Jesus Christ knows all about you, and he showed me you were coming, so you're going to be all right. Let's see, I can't hardly raise up. Let's see, you stand up. There he is. My, he's quite a little boy. Well, that's fine. All right, he's, he's, God has been merciful to the little lad. Everybody be just as reverent as you can while we pray for the sick. I appreciate your kindness and being Reverend Toots, uh, lady. Now, they ought to have a place for the mothers of those little babies. It'll draw up, see, it attracts the attention of the people, and that interferes with the healing. Now, the ushers will find the mothers a place. If they got a place in the prayer line, if they got their cards, you call them. When their little time comes, bring them right on on the platform. That's right. But if they just call the people that watch it. Now, sister at the piano, I want you to play Abide With Me constantly all the time. Abide With Me. what I have said to be the truth. Do you believe with all your heart? All right. So, you can put down there, brother, or keep our microphone on it. All right. Can we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we're here tonight gathered under this tent. Every head bowed, please. You can make all things right that is wrong. Sister is here knowing that Somehow that your spirit has moved down and revealed to her the things of her life. Speaking to her, knowing that no man would know except God. And Father, we thank thee that thou art here, and we ask you to bless this heart sister and heal her. May this power of the enemy that's bound her come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Leave the woman. All right, sister, now look here. If I could know what has been, I know what will be. You believe that? All right, you can bring me this way. You want all the time. God bless you. Be well. All right. Come, sister. <coughs> Let's have your hands.
time. <clears throat> you have trouble, inward troubles, but not. Seems like that there's something different. You, you just look this way, Justin. And I want you to believe with all your heart. You do. Of course, now, you realize that the feeling you have a very odd feeling at this time. So that's. You are the patient coming before of that anointed gift of God. That's what gives you that statement feeling like something standing near. Now, that's truthful. Yes, I see what's wrong with you. The nervous condition, the mental nerve. To tell you how you feel, you feel like you're going to lose your mind. It's just a weird upset. Everything goes wrong. And it works on you the worst time is in the evening. I see sometimes you go to the chair. You were doing something when you were praying. I believe you were washing dishes when you were praying. He said, and prayed. And when you heard about the meeting, you prayed then. You come tonight, and his car was called, and you sit down there, and you just wonder what he was down there about. That he went. And here's what it is. I've been talking to you, thinking maybe it would leave you, but it hasn't. It's holding you. It's determined to stay there. Now, if you believe that God will hear my prayer, I shall do all that I know how to do for you. Ask God, then God will make you happy. And would you believe what I tell you if I told you every word the truth is? Isn't that right? If it is, raise up your hand and say, every word the truth. Now, do you believe if I would tell you then that if it left you, you would know that I told you the truth because I told you the truth on this side. It would be on this side the same way. But I wouldn't tell you unless it left you. And if I, if I told you, you would know it would left you because right now you're standing in the Father. Weary, the sun looks gloomy, and everything like that, and everything seems like folding to get scared of things when it is in the Isn't that right? Now, uh, standing longer and longer would just make it just keep making me, but you are wanting to get well. Now, I'm going to ask Jesus now to heal I believe he'll do it, don't you? I can come just a little closer. You've had quite a struggle in life, anyhow. You know what I'm speaking of there. I don't have to say it because this is a lie. Here. But you know what I'm speaking of. Our Heavenly Father, by your Spirit, look down through the stream of time. Oh, you're here, dear Jesus. You're so lovely and kind. And we love you with all of our hearts. And our sisters standing here has been bound by an oppression of Satan, foul spirit that tries to put pride upon her. But God, she did to remove this curse of the enemy. For you said the last words from your sacred lips as you were leaving the world. You said these signs shall follow them. In my name they shall cast out devils. Help me, dear God. This jewel of faith against the enemy. Now, thou foul spirit, hast found this woman, shedding his blood freely, that you and all your kind, and the representative name of being the gift of divine healing, and it's our journey by the coming to be that you come out of the woman. There it was. Now, many times, now these may seem strange, everybody be real reverent. If you can get the person just what I was trying to do to the woman, or get her in the right mental attitude, she wouldn't have to be prayed for. The right mental attitude towards any promise of God will bring it to pass. You believe that? The word is a seed, is that right? But a sower sowed to the ground. And every seed will bring forth of its kind. If you need salvation, the 
seed's here. If you need healing, here's the seed in the Word. The Word of God is a seed. Put it in your heart. Don't dig it up every morning to see if it sprouted. Put it in there and leave it there. God's business to bring forth the harvest. You just leave it there. Water by faith and praise every day, thanking God for it. All right. The first thing to step here on our brother, he's got a land trouble also. So will you bow your head just a moment till he receives his sharing? Heavenly Father, we read in the word that where that you cast the deaf spirit out of the man and he could hear. We've seen you take those little mutes born deaf and dumb and restore to them what Satan had robbed them. See them stand, say words, and repeat behind us everything that we would say, and scream and hold their ears. Scared to know what was taking place. Now Satan has found this man and trying to get him to walk before a moving vehicle somewhere and be killed, shorten his day. Thou art here to remove this curse of Satan. The man comes because faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word, and he's come with respect now to be healed. Grant us to him tonight. Make him well. Thou demon, leave the man in the name of Jesus Christ. place your hands up on little children like this and bless them. You said, suffer little children to come to me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom. And now, if you were here, you'd lay your hands upon the little child and rebuke this skin disease. It would leave the child and be a normal little girl again without this skin trouble. And you were here on earth and lived and done these things and taught us that these things that I do greater shall you. Just send it on high, give gifts to man. And tonight, Lord, by the merits of Christ, you've come to your people in the form of an angel of God who's sent forth mankind in this uh, work that you have completed at Calvary, that we should finish this work. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I lay my hands upon this baby and rebuke this skin disease. May it leave the baby and never bother it again. In Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Vibration stops on the baby. Let's say praise the Lord. Now, if you know the little baby, watch what happens. The stuff on his arm begins to seem dry and idle. Just dry up and go away. All right. All right, sir. Let's see her. Just before I touch her, just a moment. You believe with all your heart? You're a real deep thinker, aren't you? Take things sincere. Keep it into your heart. 
God bless you. That's a good way to be. Final trouble you have. It's gone away from you. Because you're easy to keep it up. Let's say praise be to God, everybody. Yes, all right, come on, mother. How do you feel now, brother? Different, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Everybody, I know you want to praise Him. And how do you, mother? How you look this way without taking a hold of the people? I want to see if God will show me what is wrong with you. Now, you look this, this way. Now, this is not mental telepathy. There is a psychology. Peter said at the gate of beautiful to the man that sat there, said, look on us. Is that right? Jesus told the woman, said, bring me a drink. He got in contact with her. Paul, while he was preaching, said to the man, said, I perceive that you have faith to be healed. Is that right? Then it isn't psychology. It's the power of Almighty God. You believe, don't you? You believe it? All right. That arthritis you've had, it's been bothering you, has left you. You're free now. Raise up your hands. And move them up and down like this. Move your feet up and down like this. Wall the platform. Heal them well. God bless you. Let me walk you Lord Jesus, come ahead, sister. You believe with all your heart? Now look this way. And do not doubt, but just have faith. I believe I find in you a good, true spirit of faith. Now you're wanting something of me, aren't you? An intercession from to God, which now that you feel right now, that there's, a, there's something moving on you at this time. Isn't that right? That is right. That's the angel of the Lord. Sister. Your faith content. Here's what you're wanting. You're wanting your eyes healed, aren't you? Isn't that right? Well, God grant it to you, my sister. Heavenly Father, bless this woman who I bless in thy name, that she might receive her sight. Heal her, Father, as I lay my hands upon her. All right, sister dear, you believe with all your heart, take off your glasses, you are healed. Now you can go off the platform. Do you see all right? Amen. That's right. Let's say praise the Lord. Friends, you might class this fanaticism, but the Holy Spirit just stops me at this time. And I see that little boy, David, it just looks to me like he's in serious condition. How many have heard of little David? He's had an accident. He's been mashed on a back of a thing uh, riding like this on a, on a, uh, he's laying in a hospital. And uh, the Holy Spirit just seems to tell me to pray for the boy. I don't know. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, God bless that poor little boy. He's waved little children into the kingdom of God by the waving of his hands. And I pray thee, God, just at this moment, seemingly you're revealing to thy servant to pray for him. Now you who could answer prayer, when at John Mark's house they were praying, an angel went out into the prison cell and loosed the apostle Peter and brought him out of the, the prison. You're still Jesus tonight. Every angel is subject to you. I pray, God, that you'll... Bring that little boy to himself out of that unconscious condition just now and may the power of the Holy Spirit release him. Lord, Satan tried to kill him. But we now believe that you will grant this to your humble servant as we, as love with the little boy, ask for mercy for little David at this moment. Through Jesus Christ's name, he shall live. Grant it, Lord. Amen. Everybody believe with all your heart. Come on. The first time that struck me in a long time. How many of you ever heard of a little baby that knew of all of you? Knew of his accident. And he seemed like something so brave on him. All right. You're the patient of this. First, before I 
before I take hold of your hand, I want to talk to you just a little. Uh, of course, you're just a little nervous, kind of upset like. I want to get you in the right attitude of God, mentally speaking, for God's promise before I pray for you. Now, you believe Jesus is here? You believe these things that I've said is the truth? They are. All right. Now, you know that you are a stranger to me. I do not know you. But you're suffering with something. And, yeah, you're suffering with many things. One thing is you're real nervous. You're weak. You, your strength becomes... No, here it is. I see it now. Uh, it's a stomach trouble that you have. Isn't that right? I, I thought first that it was a tuberculosis about taking a hold of you. I see you so weak, you get so weak. But I see you refusing things at the table like that thing that you can't eat. Isn't that right? All right, there it is. All right, then another thing, your eyes are bad, too. You know, you're nearsighted. You don't have to be good or big. There it is. You might say that. There it is on my hand. Now, do you believe that what causes, sister, is a nervous condition? It's a peptic gulf, or any stomach causes pain, fire in the stomach, and unrest. And sometimes you think you have heart trouble, because that's just, that's not a heart trouble. Quit worrying about that. Usually when you lay down, you have that. That's the gas on your stomach pressing against your heart. It isn't heart trouble. Your heart's all right. Now, I believe God is going to make you well. Do you believe that? It's all the other things. You have to be right. He has now made you There it is. It's gone. See your face, sister, right there. Oh, it's the woman that's healed standing right here. Just saying, let's just give God thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the healing of our sister. And now, Lord, may she be well and healthy and go home rejoicing and happy. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, sister, go on home, eat what you want to. It's all over. Well, let everybody say praise be to God. Amen. I ever want to be just reverent. Now, the people that's coming, there's different diseases. Now, how many out here would like to be healed tonight? Let's see your hand. Oh, my. Isn't that fine? If you got that much faith to raise your hand to witness. Now, how many believe you're going to be healed tonight? Okay. Now, that's just wonderful. Fine. Now, look, friends. We can bring line after line to here, whatever it is, or people after people. That's all right. We'll just they keep on coming. People be healed, that's true. But everybody out there can be healed too at the same time. We can just have faith to believe. Have faith. Don't stop. Is that your next patient? Just wait a minute. Let us check out where she goes. Just this away, sister. Now, you're suffering with something I do not know. But what I want you to do, I want to contact the human spirit of yours. Uh, do you believe now? It's pretty hard because there's a whole group of people in there trying to believe the same time. Now, isn't that right out there, you behind it? See, it just kind of you see it pouring in from everywhere. And that's wonderful. I'm happy for you. But I'm trying to get a moment of When it's too low, can't you? has to be just right. Now, you hit that, it's a wave, and you hit it, and you begin to get it just right. That's why that, it seems like in faith, you can feel it's a little bit to this side, a little bit to that side. But when you single that person out, that's when faith comes. Now, the lady is sick, or she would be. Now, to look like, I would, the lady looks healthy enough. If anything that I would say, just naturally, to look at the woman, now, I'd eventually say if she had anything, it would be a little thin. Or she might be run down with the complications or something. I, that I do not know. But if I say anything outside of the revelation or what God would reveal, it would be wrong. I have to know. And that might be what's wrong with her. I do not know. But do you believe, lady, that God will tell me what's wrong with you sitting here? Or now you look just this way and just believe and just in your heart be thinking, Lord Jesus, you did these things and you gave them to your servant that the secrets of my heart might be known. Yes, you've been a person of sorrow, haven't you? 
and you're suffering now, you do have complications. And besides that, you've got arthritis. Isn't that right? That is right. Stand up on your feet. Walk this way with your hands up in the air, stomping your feet up and down. Walk fast like this. You don't have to worry about it no more. All right, you're going off the platform now. Jesus Christ makes you well. This is a Spanish woman. She said, I knew the Spirit of God was in you, too. So that is very... God bless you, sister. I, in Mexico, or down near the border among your people, I never seen a Spanish person come to the platform but what was perfectly healed. They're humble. They haven't got much of this world's goods, but they believe God. I went, they got from Mexico City, a little girl one day, and I made a challenge that I've never seen anything stand on the platform before but what was perfectly healed. And I said, I made two or three challenges of this type. While I'm standing with this, child, this Spanish woman, I said, you go and get anybody you want to and bring them here and the rest of you sacrifice your place. Let me have that person. And if that person isn't healed, then you say it's falsely. And they went and got me a little girl that had never walked in her life. And she was all twisted up. And I stood there an hour and 45 minutes holding that girl in my arms. And when the Holy Spirit came up on her and healed her, she walked right down with me, me holding her hands around in a building like that. And the Indians and Spanish people screaming and some of them rolling around in the yard and everything and had taken place. Just recently, at Zion, Illinois. How many was at the Zion meeting? If there's anybody here, somebody here can witness these things. Fine. One night, you see it appear in the papers and so forth. Staying there when Ford Wilson, a reporter for Chicago Tribune, they brought a little fellow up there that was twisted so out of shape that he didn't even look like a human, a spastic child. And I helped the little fella and prayed for him and stayed right there until after a while it seemed like his, uh, I looked down I held his little head up and what had happened, one leg was about that big around and the other just normal about like that. And his little hands was twisted around I had the little hands around my body and just held it there praying. I just kept on praying and watching. I'd see the hands move and they let loose. And in a few moments, I raised his little head up, little eyes sparkle like an angel, and his little hands come up like that, went around me, walked off the platform, come back, just as normal as any child, and when Ford Wilson seen that one leg that was that big around, normal like the other, he jumped across a bunch of flowers on the platform and said, only God can create. That's right. And there it was. And a little boy was standing there, normally whole, perfectly made whole. It appeared in the paper. You all remember the Waukegan paper? It appeared a little boy comes spastic, twisted all out of shape, walked off the platform normally without any human support. Oh, he's still God. He knows all things. God bless you, sister. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. I'll bless you. Let's just bow our heads and give him praise. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for your mercies and kindness. Be near unto us now and bless all who are in need and those who come seeking thee. May they go home rejoicing and happy through Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody, look at her now. She isn't walking like she's stoled up with arthritis, is she? That's fine. God bless you, sister. All right. Come right in here. Be with her. Sure, that's all right. All right, so let's go up for me. I do not know, but God shall reveal to you, my brother. Little lady, you're wondering, you're weak. You know what's wrong with her, don't you? I don't want you to tell me. But if by the Holy Spirit... Now, honey, I couldn't heal. It's impossible for me to heal. But my gift of God is only to tell you what is wrong with you and what you can do to be healed. Now, if I'll do that, will you believe with all your heart you're suffering with TB? Isn't that right? Is that true? And you want me to tell you how to be healed? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. And believe he hears my prayer, and the TV will be gone, and you'll be a normal, well little lady. Do you believe that? God bless you. Don't cry now. Everybody bow your head. Our Heavenly Father, a little lady stands here, needy. She comes trying to give well. She wants to live like other girls. And 
be a little servant of yours. And we realize that it's got such a hope now until it'll take your power to break the clutches of Satan. But thou can do it. Grant it to her tonight, Lord, that her faith may reach up and grab the faith that it takes to heal her. Satan, loose the girl in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just a moment. Everybody reverence. Get the holding here. I no need, I wouldn't tell you wrong, honey. Look here. See? It's still holding me. Now look here. I won't see if anything will be revealed. For soon you're a Christian. I believe it. I see no reason why that you should be healed. You've made promises and everything else that could be if you would be healed. You felt like here some time ago from praying it. If you ever got well, you want to be a missionary to work for God, do His work. God will grant it to you. I believe if you if you just have faith, the thing's over. That makes you feel better when you hear that, don't it? Yeah, because that's what. Well, here, brother, come here. You're a relative to it. Here's uh, that's what my relations are. Yeah, I hold my hand like I want to take the hand. Look at this hand. Look at this. I pull the bump. Now that's the the one that's burnt. I watch her and I take her hand off it. Right there now. And I put my hand on it. Let's see your hand here, sister. I put your hand. Now, see? See what I mean? Just smooth. It isn't the way you see the position of hand. Now, let's see your hand. You're not too well yourself, brother. That poor circulation in your blood. You can't get stiff, isn't that right? Isn't that right? Give mm-hmm. you trouble. Okay. I suppose I'm not doing it. I watch the show here. Come here, brother back here. I have to take somebody's hand. Uh, now look at his hand. See on mine. See? See? Now I'll put my hand on it. Same thing. I'll lay your hand on it. Right for me to do it. Now look at that. See? Now I'll lay her hand on it. Watch the difference between yours and hers. Now look at that. Now that's just gets as numb as it can be in like a thousand of needles. See what I mean now, sir? You said, honey, what I'm thinking about. Now look at it. Now it's got my hands in here. There's no feeling at all. Now just lift your hand up. Watch it come right back to the normal. You know what I mean? Here. No, I just want you to see it for her sake. You see, huh? She knows she's sick and awful sick. But... Sister, be of a good courage. It left you then. Now watch your, put your hand right back to yourself. It isn't there. Isn't that right? Something's happened, hasn't it? All right, sister, the blessing of God is on you. You're going to be well now. It's over. Now, there you are. You're, you're on. You looked at yourself, didn't you? You've seen it. You feel good now? Say praise the Lord. All right, sister. Let's have prayer. Father, we thank thee for thy power to heal. For our faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. Bless her, dear God. And make her your little servant and give her the desire of your heart, of her heart, in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. All right, sister. Go off the platform. I'll tell you what I want you to do. Go off the platform rejoicing. And I want you to eat just as much as you can. And go on and forget you ever had anything. See? And then about... Now, you mark my word. You wait tomorrow. And I land about 30 days. You wait again and send me your testimony to the voice of eating people. Will you do that? God bless you. All right, sister. Father, bless my dear brother and heal him. Satan, loose him now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I ask you to leave this man. All right, my brother. There you are. Now, you did not have a prayer call. No, no. But now, the, the man did not want to come ahead of anybody. He's just helping her. She was so feeble. But when I come here and caught that on he said, I'm going to try to get the prayer line later. A man with that attitude deserves to be in the prayer line. I try to find it. God bless you. Well, it's all over now, brother. Go on your road and rejoice. God bless you. Amen. Let's <laughs> go.
praise the Lord. All right, believe now. You believe with all your heart? All right, let's see. It's a little excitable anyhow, so I, I dread to tell you this. Now look this away. You believe with all your heart. You're suffering with a tumor. You know that? You have the right to be told. That's right. You have the right diagnosis. You believe Jesus that healed you of that fear, suffering? God grant that her healing will be tonight. That you have the strength and the power if she has faith. And faith without works is dead. And we pray, God, now that if she used works to come here to the platform, may she go away praising thee and being well. May this demon called tumor leave the woman in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God bless you, sister. All vibrations stop. All rejoicing. You don't get everything. I'll tell you something I accept you. I told you first. You believe now you're healed. You all your heart. It's been real to me. Let me see the people. Real time. Real time. Wear out. Don't you just look like right when you lay down and you just can't rest. Isn't that fine? I just want to say that so she said her daughter could verify that. I didn't want to tell the lady this until she was healed because she's nervous anyhow. But the woman had TB and it's gone firmer. Now that's anybody in here, if there's a doctor here, you know that's the pure symptoms of TB. Everybody knows. But you're healed now, sister. You can go on your road rejoicing and you'll be well. God bless you, sister. Sometimes that way you don't, when you have to, I'm holding too well, I guess. I see people grieving, so I, I suppose I don't want to do that. Oh, I'll bring this lady just a moment. Come, sister. You believe now with all your heart. Now let's have your hand in just a moment. Have everybody be real quiet just for a few moments. If you just give us at least five more minutes, I'll be glad to dismiss it. If you, but don't move around. It interrupts you. See, when you do that, you're, when you're dealing with the Spirit of God, is this a sensitive? I have no, nobody has any choice in knowing what these prayer lines will be. We give out uh, so many cards and just start praying for what we got there. And we don't know who's going to get in and who isn't going to get in the line. That's known only by God. And only thing I can do is pray. That's uh, God. Then it's been weighty because it's time for them to be, if they sit and watch, it's time for them to be prayed for. Don't you think so? That's right. And now, these things, there isn't a person in a building but what God knows just exactly what's wrong with you. Is that right? He knows all about it, but now he has to reveal it first. And then when he reveals it to me, then I uh, know that what it is. But I cannot know until first God reveals it. Now, and when you believe that, now just be reverent a few moments. Some nights we have people in the line who's uh, different things wrong with them. It looks like miracles and things happen. Next night, maybe we do not have. I don't know. That's just up to God alone himself. But you don't have to be up here to be healed. God knows all about you. You can be healed anywhere. It's just accepting God. This is to bring the knowledge of God to you. You understand? Say amen. <clears throat> now, all right, sister. Yes, ma'am. Sorry to tell you, Miss Sister, because it's a cancer. You, you know that. It's a bad stage, too. Now, I think, friend, what if this was your mother? What if this was your wife? Your sister? You'd want something done, wouldn't you? That's right. Now, what if that, or what if it was you yourself then? Just think of it. One out of eight yearly. Now, the woman is absolutely hopeless without God. Now, that's true. And life means just as much to this dear soul as it does to anybody in this place. Now, who could condemn or find fault with anything but trying to help a woman want to live? Now, there's only one thing that I can say. 
a supernatural being, what his name is, sister, I do not know, talking to me, God who knows, is standing here before me, and the Bible ain't here, knows this truth. That supernatural being told me that if I get the people to believe me, that not even cancer could stand before the prayer. Now, he told me that. He'll have to answer for that before God. I'll have to answer for truth, for what I know. And I know that hundreds of cases that's infallible, doctors, proofs, that were at the last stage dying when they, you look like a healthy person to the side of them, are perfect, normal people to know. You can be that too. Now look, there was some lepers set at the gate one time of Samaria when the Syrians had it besieged. You remember the story in the Bible? They said, why do we sit here until we die? If we go in the city, we die, they're starving. If we, if we sit here, we die. If we go down to the camp of the Syrians, if they kill us, we just die. Or we go, go die anyhow. Well, if they save us, we live. Isn't that right? And by that mere little shadow of faith, they moved towards the camp of the enemy, and God rewarded them. Not only save them, but save the whole, oh, all Israel. Isn't that right? Now, you're not asked tonight to go to the camp of the enemy. You're asked to come to the house of Father, where he's expecting you to come for your healing. Well, why do you sit here till you die? Let's do something about it. Let's believe God. Let's go out, face it. With God's Spirit upon us, now, without a shadow of doubt, I can prove infallibly, if you believe me, that it'll leave you now. It'll, it will. Now, here, look at my hand. See how that looks? Now, watch here, and I take my hand off. See how it looks on my hand? Now, put your hand back. That's the reason we need it. See how it swells quickly? See how little things like hitting across there? That's what I call vibration. Now, look at it. There comes the kind of golden wave. See how it goes? That's that tent moving. Now watch it. Now there it's moving down. Now watch. Here it comes again. See it coming there? I go. Now it fades away. Here it comes again. There it is. See it? Now sister. There you can see that, but only God can take it away. You go to believe. You have other things besides that too. show on the outside, but you've got an inner regard. Father, poor woman, she wants to live, and I believe she's coming now to the inexhaustible fountain of life, Jesus Christ. Help her, dear God. She's going away from here tonight with a courage, going to believe, going away to be healed, to stand in the face of the enemy and testify of the glory of God. And we're taught that all things work together for good to them that love you. Tonight is the time where faith to come. Help me, dear God. Give me faith myself as I go in this challenge to rebuke this demon that's bound the woman. Thou demon, you've hid from the doctor. That's true, but you can't hide from God. Come out of the woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave her. There you go, sister. Look here. All right, right, there she is, healed. Let's say praise be to God, everybody. Why can't we all? There she is now. Shoot the strength and the power of the Almighty. Do you believe with all your heart? Will you accept Christ now as your healer? He knows what's wrong with you. Don't you believe that? you believe it, sister, there? With all your heart? Stand up and be well, then. God bless you, sister. All right. How many believes in here God will heal you right now, right from here? Amen. Just feeling wonderfully. Let's say glory to God, everybody. Let's stand up to our feet. Are you ready? Do you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that He died and rose again? He's 
sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for your confession. Do you believe that? I want every sick person in here now to lay your hands on somebody by you. Every person in here, lay your hands on one another. That's right, honey. That's right, mother. That's right. God bless you, Dad. That's the way. Believe, sister. Believe, sister. Lay your hand right here on that. That's right. All right. Everywhere around, lay your hands one on another. Oh, my. Okay. Okay. Now, look, friends. Everybody be reverent. Listen. Do you believe he's sure to heal you? Just a minute. There's a lady standing here. Sister, was you, was you the next in line? All right, look this way. Do you believe God with all your heart? Give the usher your prayer card there. All right. Stand where you are. Repeat this. Lord, I now accept you as my healer. I believe I'm standing in the presence of your divine gift. I believe what the man has said is true. Your two burger has left you, sister. And you're in All right. Let's everyone believe in one card. Now, everybody. Our Heavenly Father, oh, be merciful. Grant the night that every sick person in the building will be healed. For all time conviction. You're here. You can prove in yourself over and over. Grant love God at this moment. That's the power of the hope that's here to heal. Satan, turn these people loose. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every spirit that has been suddenly crippled. In the name of the Lord Jesus, leave the people and come out of the 